Hello my soccer universe to a quick recap of what happened in the round of 16 of the Women's World Cup and also a little bit of a look ahead of what is going to happen. If it wasn't for Japan adv advancing over Norway, we actually would be talking right now that we will have a new champion being crowned. Well, looking out of 7 out of 8 possibilities uh, being a new champion, I think it looks quite good. Although. Japan have been probably the most convincing team so far. That's a question that I'm still asking myself. I mean, I when I look at Japan, they really look like the real deal. And then I'm always taken aback by how low they were rated ahead of the tournament, which still affects my personal predictions uh, of the um, of the Women's World Cup. And yes, my predictions are flawed in the sense that the uh, ratings are not updated because of insufficient data there. So yeah, sorry for that. But yeah, uh, the other thing that really stood out is, uh, I think the latest in the round of 16, it made clear that we, the s formerly smaller or newer nations have at least physically caught up because it used to be that in a women's game, uh, teams were level and then in the last half hour or so the better teams usually pulled through just because they were physically more ready. That is not happening anymore and it's especially apparent with the African teams who unfortunately are all out of the competition right now but they have been a real uh, shining mark of this tournament having three Africans in there with Nigeria almost ousting England to boot uh, there's a lot of stuff happening and we also see it with Colombia who are probably the surprise package of the teams that are in this quarter final although you know judging from the group stage it was not that much of a surprise anymore for sure and with Linda Casado probably have the star of the tournament already yeah Lauren James I think kicked herself out of that discussion in a way Let's run quickly through the games. I mean, I recorded a bunch of shorts uh, on these. The scheduling is a real killer for me. I cannot really watch all these games, uh, which actually hurts me a little bit because I really would like to see a little bit more. But, you know, uh, it's in the early hours of the day where I have to work. So it's basically on the side. And yeah. I it's not real attentive watching, but I'm following, let, let, let's put it that way. Uh, starting in Auckland, um, Switzerland completely being outclassed by Spain. And for me, this Spain team is so hard to call, honestly. Uh, and it's more, mostly because Japan just annihilated them. But then they go out and beat Switzerland rather easily in the most comprehensive scoreline uh, of the entire round of 16. They look good. I think we will know a whole lot more come uh, the quarterfinals. Japan was a little bit struggling against Norway, but again showed the adaptability uh, where they can do everything and they can adjust and were always the better team. Maybe the, physically the uh, Norwegians were a little bit taller, they had a top front line, but as soon as Japan tried to play it a little bit more seriously, they got the job done and that's exactly what happened in that that game Norway just couldn't hang with them. South Africa also gave the Netherlands a real real scare. I mean it was an early lead for the Netherlands but some great saves had to be made on both sides. In the end the Dutch uh, pulled through in a slot for a game that honestly yes this was meant to be the game for the US. Uh, none of the nations could watch this one and I wonder why it is needed to stay at this time slot. I really do not know this. This should have been moved at least uh, move the Sweden USA game to that slot then I think we have to be adapting. If we are adapting for the US times because that one was a ridiculous kick off. Uh, yes it worked probably well for uh, people in Sydney and uh, so on but uh, for the nations involved this was just ridiculous. Sweden USA is probably the game that everyone was talking about because the two-time defending champions are out losing for the first time since the 2011 World Cup final with their worst ever result in World Cup history. Uh, yes, they all, I think they've always reached a semi-final now being out that early is a real shocker. Yes, the tournament used to be smaller still, 
Their group play has not been great. Against Sweden, they were the better team. Again, scoring let them down big time. But Sweden was hang, hanging in their goalie, I think Mizovic was her name, uh, basically kept Sweden in play, making a few great saves along the way. The penalty shootout is one for the ages. Uh, that one is probably the penalty shootout to end all penalty shootouts in a way. Uh, and I've not only watched it, talked, 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 talked talk about it, but also uh, read. Uh, many people have analyzed that, 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 that one. Um, the way that even the preparation to uh, the run up was interesting where you know a uh, for every shooter their own goalie were handing them the ball where uh we school in Nea basically handed it to to, uh, to 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 them and every one of the u.s girls was um more or less focused everything three seconds after composing us took took the shot except for the ones that didn't uh where in sweden Mizovic which always made a made a joke and got few to smile but two that didn't really respond to that actually missed it might be coincidence, but you know, there might be more to it as well. Uh, interestingly enough is that Megan Rapino really felt probably the weight on her shoulders. She did not have a good World Cup. It was her last, potentially her last game. Uh, her not hitting the target is really, really bad. And the same thing goes for Sophia Smith. When you could win the penalty shoot and you shoot white, it is just stuff that cannot happen. Of course. That we need to talk about the last penalty because that one was a howler. Uh, I mean, you could see how um, Lina Hurtig was not comfortable taking that shot. And it was saved. However, the bounce uh, near just got her hands on it. The bounce back in the rolls over line. It's not even a millimeter over the line. It's over the line, but not even by a millimeter. That was incredible. I really have to say, this was incredible. I've never seen that one. Uh, it was also a little bit confusing at first when you saw um, uh, referee Frappa uh, with her gesturing until I realized, yes, Sweden has won, but what a finish to that one. The shooter between England and Nigeria was much less exciting, uh, although the first two penalties were a carbon copy of each other, except that the shirts were diff different, but then England were a clearly better team there. However, during the game, Nigeria was much better. I uh, probably would have deserved. I think no one expected Nigeria to go toe to toe with England. They surely did, probably would have deserved it, but I actually think that with the red card, it also kind of messed up Nigeria's match plan a teeny bit. And yeah, this red card was just something super, super, super stupid that you cannot do. But you know, young players sometimes make that uh, mistake. The question is now for how long will Lauren James be banned? I probably sh we should know this by now, but I have not seen it yet. So there you go. Uh, I also said in my short video on this game, and I want to repeat it, I actually found Serena Wichmann's response to that rather interesting because she just remained calm and said, okay, we're going to play for penalties. Like she knew, we are better there. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, really, really interesting stuff happening there as well. Australia, uh, this was the one game that started like front to front right from the beginning um denmark gave a little schedule to, to australia but the uh, first goal was already through fourth a uh, brilliant pass from from the mid midfield uh of one and australia was just better and yeah. their most notable player in race so who has been performing quite well made it then two nil and settled the game Colombia's win against Jamaica was a little bit ugly. It was a funny scene after the 1-0 uh, where a goal scorer was kind of bullied by the Jamaican <laughs> a woman uh, who was like a head taller, but it worked all out. Both teams hit the crossbar. Colombia probably still a little bit the finer team. Jamaica though, big story. And with all the troubles, they had to go through a big one. And then France, unfortunately, didn't see much of, of, of the game, but they just needed an eight-minute period to score three goals and looked like the real deal. Uh, and probably among the strongest teams still left in the competition and I really like their coach in Averena. So the bracket now pans out as follows and again uh, the ratings are the pre-tournament ratings so that's why Japan is rated so low which I think they should consider be considered favorites against Sweden. Uh, Spain 
Slight favorites over the Netherlands. Seems about right, as I said. Japan, Schultrup of Sweden. Australia against France. I think this is a very interesting one because of home field advantage. It's a game played in Brisbane. That's the one place where Australia has lost. So will this repeat itself or will Brisbane uh, make up for that? And then England should be considered as high favorites against Colombia. But that was also true for Germany. So watch out England. Watch out England for sure. At the moment, my model predicts a Spain against England final with England winning. They are the favorites. Yeah. Oh. So here are the four matches. We start with Spain against Netherlands, then Japan against Sweden, England against Colombia, then Australia against France. Really, really interesting stuff, I would say. Who do you think will win the World Cup? Did you follow the games? Could you follow the games? It would be interested in that. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for more. And I'll see you again after the semifinals. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!